Hi there tech fans, welcome back for another honest hands-on review here in Smartphone Wars by me Stephen Fox. Are you looking for the best budget phone for your money below $200? Well you might have find it today and this is the Burning Mix 2, an 80x9 Full HD Plus Infinity Display or Full Display phone that also packs a fast octa-core chip a big battery, 64 gigs of onboard storage and 4 gigs of RAM with a rear fingerprint scanner, metal back and I have to say this phone is absolutely lovely to look at and build to last. This is very fine craftsmanship, thick, solid and lovely to look at glass pack with a big metal rim on the sides. Usually don't get that good build quality in sub $200 phones and I am amazed how well and how good the Bernie Mix 2 feels in your hand. And that is achieved to fine craftsmanship and engineering. The phone weighs just over 200 grams, but it feels very solid and natural to hold in your hand. It's a 6 inch device, but thanks to that 80% screen to body ratio, you can definitely use it with one hand. And unlike other mixed devices, this has notification LED, which is quite bright and works really well. The specs, as I said, are very good octa core 2.5 GHz Helio. P25, 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of onboard storage, an 8 megapixel front camera, 4200 mAh battery, and 13 megapixel rear camera with a second camera for depth of field. But I'll get to the camera a bit later. Now let's talk about Verni Mix 2 user interface for a minute. I know how most of you really don't like all those Chinese devices like MIUI with Flyme OS, which have very custom Android skins and uh, pretty much a lot of bloat were installed, but that is not the case with Verni phones. Verni phones have a very vanilla, stock-like Android experience, which is basic, but also really recognizable. It's almost the same experience you get from a OnePlus device or from Google Nexus or Google Pixel series. So this phone does very well internationally because it's also a multi-language phone and it uses that stock Android feeling but also has the split screen multitasking uh, and you can switch the keys and choose the display size and font size as well. Now currently this is just the first iteration of the software of Avoni and you can't hide the navigation keys from the main software but this feature is coming with a future auto update. Avoni mixed with audio quality is very decent considering the budget price and the phone does have a headphone jack as well. But now on about that main selling feature, the 18x9 Full HD Plus Infinity Display or Full Display, All Display, I've heard a lot of things being called the 18x9 aspect ratio. Currently there isn't much media that can handle it, uh, there's some on Netflix, there's some on YouTube, but it's not a wide standard. However, I cannot say that the phone looks bad in any way, the almost bezel-less top part and side part of the phone is truly flagship worthy and the sunlight visibility display is also very decent do not expect amazing sunlight visibility but considering this is a 160 dollar phone it's pretty darn good and now we've come to the performance segment and first we'll start with benchmarks because i'm pretty sure that all of you want stronger than tutor score and in tutor score is just as good as any other hero p25 or close to a snapdragon 625 device so definitely getting your money's worth when it comes to benchmark scores actually the verni mix 2 performed better than expected in the benchmarks because i think of the better software optimization or higher quality ram and storage used in the phone and speaking about general performance, the Verni Mix 2 is an excellent daily driver for this price. Apps open very quickly, you switch between apps. And what really amazed me with the phone is its RAM management. With just 4 gigs of onboard storage, the phone actually never really reloaded any app in the background when I was using 20 to 25 apps. Very, very quick, very slick and smooth multitasking from a $160 device and uh, this is something not common for Chinese devices and I've only seen phones like the Redmi Note 4X manage this good RAM management with uh, such a low budget price so could this this is definitely thanks to the great software optimization maybe faster RAM and storage speeds as well phones like the Doji S60 and the phones I've tested with 6 gigs of RAM do not perform as good 
as the Verlin Mix 2 when it comes to daily performance. Now I've had this phone all the time running in sports mode from the battery section and I've never had any issues with the performance considering opening apps, browsing the web, or even using heavy split screen multitasking apps at the same time does not slow the Verni mix down even one bit in my daily use. The phone is definitely faster than Maze Alpha Duji S60 and Uliphone Armor 2 but I think it just trails to the Elephone S8 but the Elephone S8 is more expensive. Uh, however the Verni mix 2 is very close to that Elephone S8 performance for a lower price. An excellent daily driver in my books especially below $200. If this one area of the performance that uh, I didn't like quite a bit is the GPS which locked a bit slower but since this is the first software iteration I think Verne will definitely improve it with the auto update. The 4200 mAh battery life delivered very good results, you can get around 5-7 to seven hours of screen on time on a single charge and you can definitely get 2 days with moderate usage out of the phone. The quick charging is also very fast and I was able to charge from 5 to 45% in just around 40 minutes which gives you a full day's charge. So the Vernimix 2 is an excellent media device but is it a very good gaming device? The answer is it's a good gaming device but not very good. Why? Some games for instance like, uh, like really heavy games, uh, the new PES 2018 football game, the War Wings ran very good on the Vernimix 2 and the thermals were actually pretty decent on the device. I was able to get 15-20 minutes of playing sessions without feeling the phone get very hot or anything. That Full HD plus resolution is great for medias, but it does hamper the Mali T880 GPU in the Helio P25 a bit and some very heavy games like Gangstar Las Vegas, CSR Racing 2 and Into the Dead 2 experienced frequent frame drops. So this is a good gaming phone, but not an excellent gaming phone. You do have to make some sacrifices at $160. And now a bit more about the cameras, dual cameras on the back, a single camera on the front. However, it's not the Sony IMX258, but it uses an own semiconductor AR1335, the same one found in Tor E+. The user interface of the camera is very simple and uh, not the best one I've tried. You do have plenty of features, however, that second camera is horrible. Do not use that blur mode and the monochrome option is just filtering, it's not hardware like in Huawei devices. However, as a single camera sensor, the camera is actually pretty pretty good considering the price. In OK to good lighting conditions, the camera focused very fast, delivered accurate colors and the photos had plenty of details and uh, a lot less noise than I was expecting. The camera does feature some kind of face detection autofocus as movable objects were captured very good and the two times zoom in the camera was very decent and the quality loss was almost uh, non-existent in my opinion. Indoor, outdoor shots, the camera does pretty well when you have uh, okay to good uh, and excellent lighting conditions. What I like is that the camera does not overexpose images like most Chinese devices and it's definitely better than that Samsung S5 K3 sensor that most used in this price range. So this is a very good camera sensor and if there's one area that the camera really excels it does like macro shots very much. The auto settings are great, uh, the camera always tries to deliver very fast shutter speed and in really low light situations it does have a bit of problem focusing. The shutter speed gets slower with low light and you do have loss of quality but I have to say that the low light shots are pretty decent considering the price. Moving on to the front camera, it's another decent sensor, good lighting and okay lighting condition shots are pretty good, low amounts of noise, very much lots of detail, but just don't expect amazing selfies from this camera, but they're definitely good for social media. The main camera can shoot 4 HD video and it does feature some sort of electronic stabilization, optical stabilization, but it's not like a really high grade one. Front camera video is captured 480p at the moment, but it's still okay to use for vlogging at the microphone. It's actually very stable, good. This actually offers some kind of extrometry stabilization as well. And now let's wrap it all up for the Verni Mix 2. The phone is really amazing guys. I've had a blast using it. It does have that 18 by 9 4 HD plus display, good battery life, very good daily driver performance, even if the KVS games do lack a little bit. It's stock Android, premium build quality, the cameras are much better than I expected and the price is really the killer factor here. You get 
for me at least the best value for your money definitely better than Maze Alpha and Duji S60 for instance however the phone is not perfect that second camera for the bokeh effect I definitely don't recommend using that and I wish Vony wouldn't have included it anyway the GPS is a bit slower to lock but it's definitely usable and can be improved with future updates and as expected the camera slow light performance is not great but it's still decent at this price for me the pros of this phone definitely outweigh the cons and this is a great budget phone to buy below $200 and you can do so from the link below the video description. This has been Stephen Fox, thank you for watching my Vony Mi Mix 2 review. Give the video a thumbs up if you like it, subscribe to my channel for more honest hands-on reviews. Stick around.